dementia is a neurodegenerative condition in which the brain cells die. Uh, on, the re on the right hand side, you can see a, a healthy brain tissue, and on, on the left hand side, you can see a brain uh, tissue affected by uh, dementia. Currently, there aren't any pharmaceutical or medical intervention to cure or stop dementia. Uh, struggling to remember the current events and memory loss are the most common symptoms of dementia. Other symptoms include uh, change in mood, behavior, and being lost in familiar uh, places. There are around 50 million people around the world affected uh, with dementia. It's estimated by 2050 we will have over 130 million people with dementia. Uh, in fact, in the next 15 minutes, over 200 people around the globe will be diagnosed with dementia. That's, in average, something around one every four seconds. The hospital admissions in people with dementia is also often higher. Uh, in the UK, for example, at any given time, uh, one in four hospital beds are taken with, uh, by someone with uh, dementia. Uh, uh, the Alzheimer's Society in the UK uh, did a study and they reported uh, close to 20% uh, of these hospital admissions are due to preventable causes. Uh, the most common uh, reasons of people with dementia being admitted to hospitals are uh, falls, hip fractures, uh, uh, breathing problems, stroke, and urinary tract infections. Uh, providing care for dementia is also a very resource-intensive task. My own grandmother had dementia, and I've, I've, I've seen and noticed the family members uh, usually shoulder a large part of this burden. There are also disparities in how people access the care depending on where they live. Uh, in this map, you see parts of the United Kingdom, and uh, the sh uh, darker uh, shades of blue shows uh, more people had their care being with dementia, had their care been reviewed over the past 12 months. The lighter you see the shades are less people their care had been reviewed over the past 12 months. You can see in parts of the country, uh, there were uh, close to 50% of, uh, of people affected uh, uh, with dementia, uh, their care having been reviewed uh, over the past 12 months. Uh, often when people get diagnosed with dementia, they, 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 they get a, a diagnosis, they meet a doctor, and they are sent home, and they may occasionally visit to see their doctor, but often the, the case is that something happens, the, the case, the health deteriorates, and sometimes become serious, and they are uh, admitted to hospital, or they need to go and see their GP. Uh, also, there is this assumption dementia is a condition which affects people in industrial countries, but that's not necessarily true. Actually, there has been an increased number of people being diagnosed with dementia in lower income countries as well, especially in South Asia and parts of the uh, Pacific. Uh, three years ago, uh, my colleagues in our national uh, health services in the NHS and uh, a group of uh, 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 clinicians we working with our technical team, we started a project called Tim for Dementia. The idea was, can we use low-cost and connected technologies? These are devices which provide environmental monitoring, physiological monitoring. Can we use this technology and power of AI and machine learning to provide better care and support to people affected with uh, dementia. Devices, we work with several companies, and the devices we use are in two categories. Devices that monitor environmental data, like movement around the house, uh, if you open a fridge door, a cabinet door, people go a number of times, people go to bathroom, sleep, uh, and use of home appliances. Like in the UK, people usually wake up and switch on a kettle, make a cup of tea, probably here they make a, a, a coffee. Uh, and uh, the second category of uh, devices uh, are uh, uh, technologies which they use uh, to monitor, uh, basically we use them to monitor physiological symptoms like uh, uh, heart rate, blood pressure, body temperature, weight, and hydration. Uh, the idea is, if you use connected devices, usually devices which are off the shelf available, and you can integrate, if you can integrate all this data, you will have more continuous information about people and their day-to-day -day activities. 
First, we needed to create a system to, which is safe and secure because we are collecting highly personalized information. We work with different groups. We have created a system which allows to integrate the, the data from these devices. And then we use machine learning and AI to analyze this information. Most of this data are numerical measurements. They, on the single pieces of data information, usually they don't make much sense unless you combine them with other information and you analyze them over time. Uh, one of the algorithms we have uh, analyzes people's day-to-day -day, uh, activities and their routine. In these graphs, uh, the x-axis shows days of the week and the y-axis shows time of the day. And each colored block shows one type of activity. For example, you can imagine uh, uh, red block shows the sleep, the green shows uh, having breakfast, let's say blue is watching TV. And often, if, if someone it does the same thing every day, the same time, obviously you can see I've made up that figure uh, on the right, uh, it, the horizontal line, the colors will look the same. But in reality, no one will do the, exactly the same activity exactly the same time of the day. There will be some randomness in people's activities. And you can see the other figure shows a picture from a real home of someone affected with dementia. But what we would wanted to do, uh, we wanted to see how much randomness is in these activities, at whether uh, within this randomness we can find some patterns. We have created an algorithm which looks at the activities and looks at the transitional probabilities between them. For example, if I wake up in the morning and I go and make my cup of tea, what is the likelihood I go and back to the bedroom, I go and sit on a chair or go and watch TV? We let the machines to observe these activities and they'll learn these probabilities. For example, let's say if I make my cup of tea, 80% of the time I go back to the bedroom, 10% I go and sit on the sofa, 10% of the time I go and switch on the TV, but it's highly unlikely I leave the house. Now, we let the machines to look at this data over two months. Machines can, are good if you program them to learn from experience. Then for two weeks, we let the machines to look at how much people deviate from these activities. Once we have learned that, now we have a personalized model of each person's activity routines. And what we are interested in is level of surprise. Uh, for example, if one day I woke up, had my cup of tea, and I left the house, that's something machine hadn't seen before. The level of surprise will increase. And what we do, basically, we measure this level of surprise per day. And if we notice this passes over the threshold, we create, for example, an alert. Uh, that could be related to someone's health uh, uh, declining. They become less active. They become socially isolated, depressed, or can be related to hyperactivity, which sometimes is related to mood changes, uh, agitation, and irritability. One of the other top reasons in people uh, with dementia being admitted to hospitals is urinary tract infection. In urinary tract infection, a bacteria gets into the bladder, and that, if, if that gets detected early, it's, it's very treatable. You can treat them with antibiotics. But in people with dementia, because there's some of the symptoms get also mixed up with symptoms of dementia, uh, it's very difficult to sometimes to detect that. And if you don't detect it, then can, uh, the infection can spread in the blood, can become a really a serious health problem, and often people are admitted to hospital. Uh, the standard test, uh, the medical test, is, is using uh, a dip test or blood test which happen in the clinic. But you do that only if you know someone has a higher risk of uh, UTI. Without that information, how can we actually start uh, looking for the risk factors? Uh, we worked with our clinical uh, team, and we have created an algorithm. It turns out if someone has UTI, the number of times they go to the bathroom will increase. We put sensors, and we count number of times they go to the bathroom, and what we are interested in the increase. If someone having infection they could, could be possibly have a slight temperature. We ask people to might measure the body temperature twice. Uh, the sleep patterns change, the movement patterns change, because uh, UTI can come with lot like delirium. And then we have created a machine learning model which has learned from examples we have given and basically detects the risk of UTI. Once we detect the risk, now the important part is how do we communicate this information to clinical teams? We didn't want to remove human uh, from the clinical interactions. We wanted to help our clinicians to have better information to make more informed and efficient decisions and prioritize their tasks. 
To do that, we have created a system uh, which we call it integrated view. Each home will appear like a card, and these cards are dynamic. Depending on the priority of the events we have, if something serious happens, they move. Always on top uh, uh, left-hand side of your screen, you will have the highest uh, priorities uh, related to the cases. Now, uh, our clinical team, when they see a system generates, uh, the system generates an alert, for example, say someone has uh, UTI or hypertension, they will click and they will see a screen like this. This screen now will give them uh, all the information which we have been collected. For example, uh, 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 we, all the information we have been collecting. Uh, for example, they can click and see the, all the blood pressure for the past two, uh, two months, past two weeks, depending on the, what they want. They can look at all the environmental information. But in reality, what we want to do, we want to help machines to simplify this task of decision making and make it much more efficient. It, it, what happens is the machines, when they, for example, they detect someone has a UTI or someone has hypertension, they also will give some explanation. L like an algorithm will tell our clinicians why I think this is a case of UTI. And in that case, they will have, a, a, basically we have worked with our clinicians to design clinical pathway, pathways how to respond to these alerts. And in those cases, sometimes a, a clinician may need to go and look at the, uh, the basically background data, the provenance information to make uh, decisions. When we started this project, uh, most of the, our work was like looking for a, uh, identifying patterns and detecting the cases. But more and more information we collect, we can now become more predictive. Because over time, uh, we have created algorithms which we have seen the cases before, we are collecting more data, and we can train new AI and machine learning models to extract these patterns and to learn from the experiences and examples uh, we had before. Also, we can start personalizing this model. The model of activity detection was an example that showed how you can use uh, machines to learn something and personalize it to an individual. Uh, we have, for example, models looking at people's vital signals. Uh, and then they learn uh, what are the people, uh, what are the norms for an individual. For example, I can be an upper boundary of blood pressure, someone can be a uh, uh, lower boundary. Uh, my doctor might think where I am is it seems okay now for me. What we are interested in are changes. If my blood pressure keeps changing now from where I am, these are type of patterns we are interested in and in training machines to be able to pick up. Part of the work also we have done, uh, now we are creating a daily wellness score because we are monitoring people's activities, we are monitoring people's vital signals. If we create, combine all this information, we can create like a daily wellness score. And what happens is if you have someone's daily wellness score over time, you can now create also models can become predictive. You can see whether that, that, that trend is going towards uh, decline or, or towards improvement. Uh, in the next uh, uh, short video clip, uh, some of my colleagues who, uh, from our uh, National Health Service who have been involved in designing and leading this research, they will talk about uh, their experience, and uh, my colleagues from our technical team and some of our user groups, they will speak about their experience about this project. It's been a fantastic opportunity. It just demonstrates uh, what can be achieved when sectors come together in partnership. I think we will see a fully digitally enabled NHS in the future. Not only will it help us to understand patients, but it will move us towards earlier diagnosis and precision medicine techniques. My grandparents have dementia. Although my, my grandfather is not involved in this project, in a way I'm thinking uh, maybe what I do right now as a research in future come up as a solution that would also help him. It would be very nice to think that this is the norm for the future. This is how people will be looked after um, in their own home for as long as and for as much time as possible. Thank you.